Hi, everybody. Hi. This is a wee, a wee bit of alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So tonight, uh, we're going to begin with a little bit of a discussion on insubstantial and substantial. And then we're going to move on to uh, how to actually bring that into our, your practice and uh, uh, incorporate it in with the movements of the Kwa, the Yao, and Elbow Jin. In, uh, and we're going to put that in a, in, in a silk reeling exercise. So a lot, of, a lot of fun stuff for tonight. And uh, we're going to begin with uh, a discussion of, of insubstantial and substantial. And the, uh, in the, in Taiji Chuan Through the Western Gate, I talked about that. For me, I think it's the pivotal chapter of the book. It's, it really, it sets up the, the whole conversation. And I have to say, it informs everything that I do and practice. And uh, so I'm, uh, uh, it's, it's the key thing. And not just me, the uh, uh, Yong Cheng Fu said it was, it, it's the first principle. It's, it's, it is the thing that, that makes Tai Chi Tai Chi. It's, it's the ability to distinguish between insubstantial and substantial. Everything else comes from that. And so the uh, idea is that, that everything every point in the universe has its own insubstantial and substantial. And by substantial, we're talking about how much stuff is, is present. There's a quality of, in substance, uh, there's a quality of, of fixity and density. And um, uh, uh, so that the, uh, it's, the uh, substantiality comes from from that idea that that there's there's stuff there, and we contrast that with insubstantial, which is tending toward non-stuff. So there's this eternal dance. It's talked about in the Tao Te Ching, where the, that non-being and being give birth to each other, and that is played out in the Taiji form, where we go from emptiness to form to emptiness to form, and there's this constant ebb and flow of of that, where we are, we in, in, in its grossest form, we see it in the in which leg is supporting my body, you know. So if there, if we we say the the supporting leg, we call that the substantial one because that is the one that's doing the work. The uh, the insubstantial one is the is the one that is is in a support in the role a secondary role in that, but doesn't mean that it's not participating it just means that it's it's not the primary focus and so uh, the being able to differentiate between those those two is is a key but it goes much be much farther than just which leg has your weight it goes into everything because as as the as i said the uh, every point has its own insubstantial and substantial and so it, what determines the how substantial something it is is how much of your awareness you bring to that that thing and so if i if i reach out with my right hand that hand is substantial because that is that has my consciousness i'm bringing i'm bringing my awareness to that and i'm extending forward with that my left hand is reaching down and it still has attention but it's not the business end of the of the operation there and so everything has its its substantial and insubstantial and that means how much of what makes it up is present in that in that moment and that is like the uh uh even your uh, let's say the uh the floor is very substantial to my reckoning compared to the the space above the floor, the uh, the my the meat and bones of my body is more substantial than the energy that animates it. The energy is more substantial than the thoughts that lead the energy. The thoughts are more substantial than the awareness that precedes the thoughts. So it goes. It's a 
everything is a continuum of substantiality and insubstantiality. But where that comes into play is that in that dance, that eternal dance of going from being and non-being, playing with each other, we create the dance of life. That is Tao. That is the everything is, is interpenetrating and interacting and interrelated. And whichever you, light you're shining on gets the, uh, gets the juice. Dennis you, had, oh, Dennis, you had something you wanted to uh, say about that? You're, you're muted, Dennis. Still muted. All right. You've said it better than, you've said it better than I could. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, no, that's the point. I, yeah, yeah that you, I, I have nothing to add. Okay, thanks. Cool. Richard. Um, this might be much too early to ask this question, but I'm going to ask it so I don't forget it. Okay. Uh, can the supporting leg be insubstantial? Yes. Everything is, it depends. It's entirely based on your, your perspective. You make it substantial or insubstantial by the attention you're giving it. So yes, absolutely everything, everything, there's an insubstantial aspect to the supporting leg because you know, if I'm focusing on my non-supporting leg, then that to me is, is more substantial in that moment. So, it, uh, uh, so it, there's no actual, there's no absolute substantial and insubstantial. It's entirely based on perspective. Yeah, I was afraid the answer to that question was yes. <laughs> and it it creates a um, infinite potentiality, but we're kind of moving toward less and less uh, fix, fixed and <laughs> and and localized. It's 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 more yeah. Everything is all everything is possible, and what is it's based on is based on consciousness. It's based on. Uh, what you bring to the to the equation, so that we can have all kinds of of crazy paradoxical phenomena. Once we break out of the idea of limiting our thoughts to a uh, uh, to a fixed way of looking at it, in, in, it looks in like the Bruce. Third, in hey, the Bruce. Third chapter, in the third chapter, hey, you give the example of. Of standing on one foot, the weighted foot is is, is is substantial until the other foot turns into a kick, and then that right. becomes a substantial foot. That's right. That's right. That's a, that. That's great. A, a perfect example there. So, what uh, something changes because suddenly my attention is on the foot going out. It's no longer primarily on on the uh, supporting leg, and even though both have some part of my awareness and must. In order for to to execute that uh, properly, and for us to be able to to keep track of all those things, we have to shift out of the limits of our conscious mind. So when I say consciousness, that means we're narrowing our focus of our awareness so that we're actually looking at we're we're narrowing it down so that we can think about one thing, but to do that, we also have to expand our awareness so that we're able to include more and more. And when we're in a super conscious state, we're able to keep track of, of lots of things at, simultaneously without, without narrowing it down. But the, by bringing the focus in, then we can, we can generate energy and, and direct energy, but through that, through that narrow focus. Richard. Uh, I was just going to say that that example also brings us closer to understanding that uh, sure and Shu is not yin and yang. Right. Right. Because yin and yang is always happening in the realm of the substantial. Right. It says, is the substantial expanding or contracting? Is it getting, you know, is it reaching out or pulling in? And that's, so when we're, we're, it's an entirely different order of being 
than 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 yin and yang, and that's uh, that's where the fun begins. So we Thank get you. all this all this stuff, and these are just ways of talking about stuff we're already doing, but. And by doing it, by talking about it and thinking about it, and by differentiating between yin and yang, by differentiating between, between substantial and insubstantial, we are then able to generate energy. We are able to then hold poles in opposition because when everything is a fusion, then th there's, there's no energy. It's just now. But when we when we want to generate energy to do to do work to do to do something to throw a punch or to uh, to use our hands to heal somebody, we want to create an energy flow, and that means we need to separate, and we need to to differentiate. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on, and actually bring this into a uh, uh, to a physical um, thing and. Uh, why don't you stand up? So first, let's uh, let's just uh, go back and uh, review the. Uh, let me stand over here. Here we go. Um, let's go back and review the idea of substantial and insubstantial. We're not shifting weight. We are. We are making one leg or one. Yeah, one leg or the other more substantial. So if I feel the ball of my right foot, I set my right knee and I'm preparing my right leg for to become more substantial. So then if I, using that, I release the claw and I spiral down to the right, my right leg becomes very substantial. I now have about 80% of the support in my, in my, uh, uh, my body is coming from my right leg. I take it a little farther and it goes to 90. You know, I pick up my left heel and I've got about 95%. So everything is like, is really coming on that. That is more substantial. So just feel into that. And then, so we release the quad, we spiral down. So that's the quad is the, the yin aspect of that. That's this, this part of the, the hip joint here, the inguinal crease, you, you spiral down. Now we're going to use the yao, which is that lower back around your lower, lower lumbar, your sacrum, that area. And we're going to use that to turn the body. So we're not turning from the quad, we're turning from the spine. And we rotate up. So here we are. We're, we turn to the left and we did it by the yang part, which is the yao. And now I'm going to feel the ball of my left foot. I'm going to set my left knee. And just by beginning that process, by beginning bringing my consciousness, my awareness into my left leg and making a decision that, oh, yeah, buddy, you're going to become the substantial leg now. I'm going to then spiral down to the right da, 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 and release down into that. And what happens? My left leg is now the substantial leg. Why? Because I chose it. Because I said, "Hey, buddy, you're going to be you're going to be holding the holding up the 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 bulk of my body now." And then I use my yao, and I turn. Okay. So then this is so whatever I go, going back to the to the right leg now. I'm going to spiral down to the left now. Feel the ball. Set the knee spiral down to the left. So this loads the system. I want, to, if I want to generate power, if I, I say I want to pull or something or reach out, I use my yao. And so this loads, creates the, like winds the spring and then I turn and boom. So that I'm able to generate power from, from that interaction. Okay, everybody got that? Any questions? All good, all good, everybody. No, Valerie, yes. Unmute, Valerie. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I suppose the answer to my question is uh, it just takes practice, but I'm finding that when I'm executing my form and I set the ball on my foot or I'm in the ball of my foot and I set my knee and then I um, release the claw, I soften the claw, that as soon as I really start to move, then I lose it and I have to constantly go back to releasing that claw. So it's just practice. There's no, oh, this is a trick. <laughs> <laughs> It's not how we learn to, to move. So you, we are old dogs learning new tricks now, and uh, which is kind of cool, but it's, uh, and it actually gives us a whole lot of potential going forward. There's a potential for growth that uh, many of our, many of those in our demographic do not have. <laughs> so we want, we want to say, oh, good, what else is possible? What could be better than this? So the, uh, we, we're continually looking for making the system a little bit better. So the answer is yes. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, give you some very simple stuff that you can practice on your own and kind of get the feel of it so that you can then incorporate it into more complex activities. Okay, so, and uh, just as a note, anybody who wants to do it, um, go over what you're doing, just uh, contact me and we can, we can work something out on the, uh, where we, uh, we do a, a private session or something like that. If anybody needs to, uh, to uh, any kind of personal coaching on this, because it, it took me decades to work this out. So if you're not getting it immediately, that's fine. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to make it as simple as I can, but it's still going, we're swimming upstream. We're going against patterns that have been established for decades. So take your time, give yourself uh, lots of opportunities to, to have a win on it and uh, don't beat yourself up if you're not getting it immediately. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the next thing, okay? And here, we're going to uh, put your right foot forward and your weight is primarily in the right leg. So your right leg is substantial right now. So the, we're going to go back and forth on this. So maybe I'll turn my, turn my body so you can see what's going on here. So we're gonna go back and forth on this and then we're gonna lead this into doing this with a silk reeling exercise. So first you start off with the ball on the right foot and uh, set the right knee and spiral down to the left, releasing the qua and then turn to the right. Use your yao. Now feel the ball of your left foot, spiral down to the right, releasing the qua and then turn to the left. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, turn to the right. Left foot, spiral down to the right, turn to the left. Okay, so, so that's, now we're gonna add in a little elbow with that. So now back to the front leg, so spiral down to the, spiral down to the left and Reach out with your elbow and turn. Use your yao. So you're directing your energy out there. And now feel the ball of your left foot. Spiral down, uh, spiral down to the right. Release your left qua and then turn to the left. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral left, turn right. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral right, turn left. Okay, so that's that's a real simple way of looking at it. Now we're gonna take that and put it into silk reeling. So just to refresh your, your memory, silk reeling, a number of silk reeling exercises, here's my favorite. And that is what I'm doing is I'm 
bringing my hand up. So as if I have a big circle here, I'm gonna bring my right hand up, get to the top and turn and hand comes down. Get to the bottom and then I, my palm turns up and I make the bottom half of a figure eight. Come up to the top, turn my hand and then make the other side of the figure eight coming down. And then I go back to my big circle again. Okay, so uh, don't worry if you don't got that right away because we're gonna, we're gonna play with that. We're gonna do it glacially slow. So real, and so I want you to feel it in each piece of that because we're gonna connect that up to the changing of the substantiality of the legs. So begin with the uh, weight, uh, your, uh, your right leg is substantial and you're going to use your right hand. So as you spiral down to the left, your right hand comes up, palm out. When you get halfway, we're going to rotate the forearm and come up, actually, hold on. No, we're going to continue up. You're going to use your yao and turn. You're going to come up to the top of the circle. Then you're going to feel the ball of your left foot, set your left knee and rotate your forearm. So the palm is facing out. We're gonna go down the outside of the circle, but this time in the back leg. So this time we're going to spiral down, we get halfway and then we use the yao to turn and we come down to the bottom of the circle. So now we are fully into the back leg, but we're not going to stay there very long because now we're going to go up on the inside. We're going to make that figure eight. So feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee, spiral down to the left as you shift into that front leg and the right hand comes up and to the crossing point of the figure eight and then Continue upward as you turn to the right. And then you're going to go into your back leg. So everything going up is in your front leg. Everything going down is in your back leg. And then feel the ball of your left foot, your back foot. And as you spiral down to the right, you're sinking into that back quad. Your hand comes down to that crossing point with the palm facing out. And then you turn to the left as your hand goes down to the bottom. And we're going to begin again to make the circle. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Right hand comes up, palm facing out. So really feel into that posture for the moment. Just feel into releasing the yin part of the, of the, of the qua there, just you're that action. Now we're gonna to go to the yang part as we continue upward, we turn, use the yao turn, we get up to the top of the circle and then we're going to now go into the yin part. So we coming down, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Rotate your forearm. So you're reaching out with that elbow so notice that with my left hand, it's not just dead, it's actually reaching out too. So what we're doing here is we're creating energy by holding these two hands in opposition. The tensegrity of, of, of my body mind is, is creating, creating this whole body connection, which allows the energy to move smoothly throughout. So now I'm going to turn to the left, use my yao, and the hand comes down to the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the front leg, feel the ball of my right foot, set my right knee, spiral down to the left as my right hand comes up, palm out. You're making the, the bottom of the figure eight now, come up and continue, turn to the right hand comes up, 
Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. We're coming down, this is yin. So we're going to barrel down to the right as the hand comes down. And then we turn, use the yao, hand comes to the bottom. And we begin again. Right ball, right knee, spiral down to the left, hand comes up. Turn to the right, use the yao, reach with your elbow. Your hand, your hand again comes up to the top and then left ball, set the left knee and spiral down to the right. Rotate your forearm, palm out. Turn to the left, use your yao, hand comes down. Right ball, set the right knee, you're gonna make the figure eight. Spiral to the left. Turn. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral to the right, and comes down and turn. Okay, good. So let's just uh, take a pause here and just see if there's any questions, it's clear enough. The way I'm showing it. Scott. So I seem to have this problem um, with this exercise and other exercises. Like, um, so if I'm, in the, if I'm in the front leg and then I have to, and then I have to, you know, go to the back leg, my knee is always way forward. So setting the knee means I have to like really you know, really go back far. So I, I think I'm doing something wrong. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, maybe, um, maybe that's just the way it's supposed to be. I'm not sure. No, no, it, it, well, it actually shouldn't be that much of a, a, a wavering here at all. If you look at, I'll do it facing, you can see here. Okay. So I can do it. So I'm at my, my right leg is substantial. I'm coming up. I'm going to my, my left now, okay? Notice how far my body has moved, okay? I'm going back to my right leg. Going into my left leg. So there's really not a lot of forward and back. It's, it's a question of, of, of using the, uh, using the claw to, create substantiality and insubstantiality. And like I say, this is, this took me decades to, to figure out. So don't, you know, take, take some time to actually enjoy the ride. Yeah, Scott. So it, to me, it looked like when you were doing that, it looked like your back knee was way forward of your foot. Yes. Right. So, because yes. when you say set the knee, you say set the knee over the ball but it didn't look like your back knee was over the ball at any point. That's a very good point, Scott. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's, um... So whenever I, when I'm talking about going, so I'm in my, my front leg, I want to go to my back leg. I'm going to set my knee. So you, you can see here where the, uh, the knee is. So if you're uh, if you have a long stance, you need to get the uh, to get that uh, alignment. You're gonna you're gonna be your knee is gonna be way far of the forward. If your stance is shorter, it's gonna be much closer. So what we're doing here is we're trying to get our alignment so that the body is 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 I'm feeling it in the ball of the foot. I know that. If the, the geographical location of my knee is back here, so that I'm, it's right straight down over my knee. I'm not getting the same uh, bite uh, into into the ground. I might, my weight will actually be in my heel now. If I bring my bring my uh, my knee right over my back foot, so perhaps a, a better way of saying it is in the front knee your weight is right straight right over the uh, the ball of the foot in the back knee you're going to engage it in a way that makes the ball of the foot substantial 
Does that make more? Is that a, a better way of, uh, of putting it? Does that clarify that? Uh, that clarifies it. Now I got to try it. Okay. Uh, anybody else have that that question or that uh, does that clarify anything for anybody else? Could you do okay. it a couple more times from the side? I, that was a little easier sure. to see the arm. Sure. So I'll do it with a nice long stance so you can really see what I'm talking about here. I'm in my front. My, my front leg is substantial. Okay. So I set my knee over the ball of the foot. I know if I put it anywhere else that leg is not i'm not going to be getting my my substantiality down through the ball of my foot and that's what i want to do i want to have that as my focal point of my foot so that's fine my back foot however i know that to make that that foot substantial i'm looking for the sweet spot i know that if i bring my my knee way back to here i've gone my butt's sticking out i'm i'm I'm, I'm, my weight is in my heel whenever I do that. So I'm, I, I've thrown my, I've uprooted myself. So what I, I want to do is my knee will be forward of the ball of my foot here because that's, that's how my body is, is designed, right? It's, and and I, yours probably is too. So you want to, you come back and so as you're doing it, so get the idea of, of uh, actually get the feeling of it. You're spiraling down and you want to feel that point where you feel the maximum amount of contact through the ball of the foot. So you, you just go back that far. Notice how, how far back my, my body is. I'm well forward of, uh, of my back heel, but my front leg is, is, is pretty empty, right? I got about 90% of my weight in my in my back leg now. If I go any farther, I have to, I lose, I lose contact. So I want to, I mean, if I, if I want to just stand on one foot, then I'm going to, I'm going to feel it here, right? So I want to get, uh, but in, in this posture, I don't want to go 100% of the back leg. I want to go about 80 or 90%, maybe 80, I guess, is probably a good one. So which case I don't want to go back any farther than that. Okay, so doing it, boom, spiral, spiral down, turn, going to the front leg, set the knee, and notice it's almost vertical here because that's the way our bodies are designed. Boom, back leg, spiral, turn. So the main thing is you're feeling, when I'm like this, I'm feeling a, my central pillar is going straight down through the ball of my foot. If I go back any farther, it's in my heel. All right. Any other questions? Can you show the arm, arm from the sides? Sure, from the side, sure. So again, with a, a very long stance so you can see. So here we go. So I spiral down to the to the right, or yeah, to the left rather. Okay. Left hand is reaching out. Hand comes up, so boom, I turn, get to here, and then I'm going into my back leg, so I rotate, spiral to the right, palm out, turn to the left. Make the, uh, I'm going up now under the uh, figure eight, spiral to the left, hand comes up, turn to the right, hand follows the figure eight, Going, I'm going down now, so spiral to the right. Right hand comes down, turn to the left, and back to the circle. Okay, so let's uh, let's do it. I'll, I'll keep going it uh, this way where I'm 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 on, on the side. So we'll uh, practice this a little more. Okay, so here we go. So spiral down. It, Left, right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Let the right hand comes up on the outside of the circle. And then turn to the right, come up to the top, rotate. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral to the right. At that halfway point, turn. Use your yell. Right ball, set the right knee. Spiral down to the left, hand comes up. 
Turn. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Palm out, rotate your form till you're reaching out, reach out with your elbow. Feel the, just pause in that moment and, and, and to feel the power in this posture. Turn to the left. Figure eight, spiral down to the right, or to the left, hand comes up. Turn to the right, to the top of the eight. Left leg, spiral down to the right, hand comes down, rotating that form, palm pressing out. Turn to the left. So circle again, spiral left. Turn right, spiral left, or spiral right, turn left. Spiral right, hand comes up, and hand goes up, turn left, spiral right, turn left. Spiral left, turn right, spiral right, Turn left. So the main thing we're doing here is we're learning how to coordinate the qua, the yao, and this arm movement. So that if I want to use it, there's a reach of my elbow and everything is connected up. Coming back, ah, oh, I'm Coming back like this and oh, out and shh. So you're, mm, you get this kind of action. It's a very whippy, spirally kind of action, which is uh, tremendous for a whole bunch of stuff in your body. So, uh, uh, any questions on this? It's an almost 90 degree turn on your body, huh? Um, it can be, yes. It should the inside be on the center line? Um, it can't be. It's no, it can it? Let's, I'm asking. You're, <laughs> That's you're asking the question, Wayne. Okay, so, so as we're the inside, the figure eight, you mean? Yeah. So boom. Uh, yes. Okay, so what Maria pointed out something I never considered before is that that the turn uh, is going to dictate how uh, uh, the the how big the figure eight is so if I'm if I'm coming up like this I'm doing my figure eight I'm spiraling down to the left so my hand is right in front of my my center line okay I'm reaching out and I'm turning to the right and notice that my hand is still in front of my center line. And then I turn to, I spiral down, going into my back leg, spiral down to the, uh, uh, to spiral onto the left and turn to the right. So the hand is, is even though it, it looks like a figure eight, it's, it's because my body is is doing that too. I want to keep that pretty much on the center line as I do that, as I make that make that figure eight. This is uh, for extra credit. Don't worry about it right now. <laughs> it's I don't want to add too many too many variables to this thing. But as you can see, this exercise has layers and layers that we can uh, that can take you into uh, uh, you know really cool explorations. Okay, so uh, um, any uh, any difficulties with this? Any uh, questions? So uh, let's uh, deconstruct it here because uh, uh, I see. Um, Yeah, let's take a take a look at what we're doing here. 
So we'll do it nice and slow now. Is there somebody? No, it's okay. Okay. So spiral down to the left, hand comes up. So you're reaching out there, feel the, feel it your left hand also. So we're making this into kind of a, uh, a Nikong exercise here that reaching your hand is on the, is on your center line. So that means that as Dennis was noticing, your, bo your body really turns as you get it. Or if you're not able to turn that much, you, you'd make it a smaller, a smaller circle. But we're coming up here like this and then we turn. So to make this have any effectiveness at all, I'm going to reach with my elbow. So my elbow reaches out as I'm coming up here. So notice that the action is, is like this sort of like a, uh, like a diagonal flying kind of, kind of thing. So I'm coming up here and I'm turning, but if I'm not reaching with my elbow, this has no power. If I reach with my elbow, this has gobs of power. Also the left hand reaching out creates power in that too. I'm coming, I'm going to the yin part now, I feel the ball of my left foot. I set my left knee and what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to rotate my forearm. So here again, I set my elbow. I rotate my forearm and as I'm bringing the hand down that circle and I get to the halfway point here. So I'm releasing into the, into the left quad, my back leg. The hands are, are reaching out and this also has a tremendous amount of power. Feel, but just by reaching out there with both elbows, with the, the hand, both fingers, the fingers of both hands, you feel the Feel the energy that you're generating. These are poles in opposition that are creating this, creating this energy now. It's also creating chin because of the tensegrity of the, of the structure. So then we're gonna continue that. We're gonna to turn to the left and this hand comes down like that, get to here. So notice my body is turned very substantially to the left. My weight is in my my back leg, so my, my left leg is the substantial one. I'm gonna come up the inside now. So we're gonna make a very a, a smaller gin here. Set the elbow and oh, we're going to, coming up, so we're going to um, spiral down to the left as we, the hand comes up. So you're reaching out here. So, so what, what's happening here, we're going, we're going like this, spiral down to the left and the hand can, comes up to here. And then, um, is that right? Spiral, no, spiral down to the right. That's right. Spiral down to the right as the hand comes up to here and then turn to the left. So sorry about that. So we're here, we're going to spiral down to the right as the, as the hand comes up and then turn to the left. And then we're going to spiral down to the right as the hand comes down, elbows are out, palms are out and turn. Back to the circle, spiral down to the left, hand comes up. You have to set that elbow to get, to get your chin there. Turn to the right, boom. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Rotate your forearm. You're into this posture now. Feel the power. Turn to the left. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral left. I mean, spiral right as you, your hand comes up. Turn left. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral left, hand comes down, rotate your forearm, reach with your elbows, turn to the right, and 
right, turn left, coming down, bow left, turn right, bow right, turn left, bow left, turn right, bow right, turn left, bow left, turn right, bow right, turn left. And I may have contradicted myself there, but that's the way to do it. And I'm not thinking about it so much. That's the, uh, that's, that's the pattern there. Okay, so let's, uh, any questions on that? And we'll move on to other things. Valerie, you have a question? Did you have a question? No. Okay, cool. All right. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to get it. Kind of laid out the, uh, you know, the, the, the formula there, but you can see that we're playing with insubstantiality and substantiality. You know, the, and this is where we generate energy. This is where we generate gin in the, in the form. This takes it out of just a, you know, kind of a nice pleasant calisthenic and turns it into a martial art. It turns it into a ne gong, a, uh, a healing exercise also. And uh, this is where we kind of peel back the curtain and start to uh, see uh, how this thing, how this thing works. <clears throat> yes. If it feels really complicated trying to put it all together, would it help to practice it in pieces, like practice uh, just the arm movement without the feet, practice just the feet without the arm, and then put it together, or is that- Did everybody hear that? Yeah, so, so the answer is yes. Yes, of course. So just, uh, let's say, uh, let's say we're gonna do it, just do the, just do the circle. Bow left, turn right, bow right, turn left, bow left, turn right, bow left, right, turn left. And you can do that over and over again. So just get, just to get that. If it feels too, there's just too much there and really getting to the core of the uh, substantial, insubstantial idea by uh, just doing that, you're going to get, you're going to get a, a, a lot out of it just being able to do that. So there's a, there is a, uh, it can be a little overwhelming if you are trying to get everything all at once. Valerie. Um, what I was doing that was helping me um, there toward the end, I kind of zoned out on you and I was thinking of, okay, when the hand was coming up that my weight wanted to, my weight, my substantial leg would be the front leg. And yes. then when I was coming, being my hand coming down, then I was, you know, substantial in my back leg. And my arm just kind of followed along. And I found my arm was doing what it was supposed to be doing, just as long as I was focusing on hand up, weight substantial in the forward leg, hand coming down, weight substantial in the back leg. So that helped me. I don't know if that helps anybody else. Succinctly put, very nice. So uh, uh, my job is to clarify all the details too. So I, uh, <laughs> so I, I will oftentimes run on a bit, but uh, just trying to cover all the bases. But uh, I like what you what you said there. That uh, so yes, and hand coming up, yang, hand coming down, yin. Front leg yang, back leg yin. You know, and, and just learning to uh, learning to do that. Front leg substantial, back, you know, front leg insubstantial. And then you're getting, just learning to, to identify those things. So there is a certain amount of thinking that one does while one is learning this. It's absolutely necessary to go to that, uh, follow that, you know, to actually use your, your thinker bone to, uh, 
to make it uh, to, to to make sense of it. And after you get it a while, then your body just knows. But it's you you can't get there without actually, you know, breaking it down, analyzing it, and then once you do and you say, oh, that's how it is, then you throw it out all away. And that's why sometimes I trip over my own words because I uh, I've kind of moved it over into this whole other part of my my awareness where I just know I don't I know without thinking. And then if I have to translate it into words, sometimes I I get twisted up. So, um, but that's true of any of this stuff. We have to think until we don't, until we don't, and then we just we we move to a state of knowing without thinking. And that's where the fun is. Cool. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? That was great, Rick. It's uh, incredible how, like you said, if the other arm is dead, it makes all the difference when you actually activate it and you create this pose in opposition. It, the tensegrity and the wholeness changes everything. So, yeah, it was great. Thanks. Thank you, Guillermo. Great. Anybody else? Any other thoughts, comments, uh, requests? Yeah, Scott. Just, yeah, I'm I'm terrible at following, especially mirroring. You know, so I was doing, you know, I wasn't doing it half ass, but I still got a lot out of it. I still, you know, it still felt really good. So, you know, even well, even one way, probably not one doing way, it. The left right thing throws a lot of people off because they. You know, we don't think in that, the body doesn't think in terms of left, right. That's a, that's a mental thing. So one, one way of, of when you're following along is to say, I'm doing everything my right arm. So my left hand, I, I have that as a point of reference. I say, oh, okay, so this is the left one. This is the one, the basically the insubstantial hand. So it's out there doing its thing and so, Everything's happening here. So if I want to turn to the left, it's, oh, I'm going to be turning to, toward that, the insubstantial hand. So just having that as your, as a point of reference is a, uh, is a way of breaking through the left, right verbiage. And we also, you should be able to do it on both sides, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Maria said that, you know, you have to be able to do it on both sides. I didn't want to, complicate things any more than they already are. That That's enough. Yeah. That's enough. Thanks. <laughs> this, this, exercise, this exercise helped a lot from the side. What's that? This exercise helped a lot seeing it from the side. Oh, good. Good. So you can see. And you can also see how little the body moves back and forth. Yeah. It's it's really just this spiraling thing, you know, that we're, that we're, and that's where this, the, the, the gin, the chancogen that that comes through this uh this this exercise it's something that's present in all forms of tai chi is really emphasized in chen style the chancogen has that that kind of wiggly wobbly spirally thing going on there and uh but even it's even in a yang form it's it's there but just it's hidden so someone else had a question uh i Actually, it's Sarah. actually not a question. I struggle with the right and left and I get too locked up in my head. Can you do it one time with your back to us? And that way I would be able to actually flow with what you're doing. Okay. I Absolutely. think, you know. Okay, so here I am. I'll, I'll, I'll talk it through. I spiral down to the left. I don't have right hand comes up, turn to the right, and comes to the top of the circle. Spiral my left, my back leg, my left leg, I spiral down to the right, rotate my forearm, and then turn to the left. And then for the inside of the circle, the the figure eight, I going back to my 
right leg, my front leg, I spiral down to the left, right hand comes up, reach out my elbow, rotate my forearm. So I'm spiraling down to the left, my body's turned to the left. My hand is on my center line. And then I turn to the right, use my yaw to turn to the right, come up to the top of the circle or to the top of the figure eight. And then going, I'm doing yin now. So I'm gonna feel the ball of the left foot, spiral down to the right and comes down to the halfway point, use my yaw and turn to the left. So it's left, front leg, right, left or right, back leg, then turn left. And then coming up to the figure eight, spiral, spiral right, hand comes up, turn left, and then back leg, spiral, left, spiral right, and comes down, turn left. Just do it once without talking it through. Okay. So they can see the flow. Here we go, boom. Like that. Thank you. So we get that silk reeling energy, this chancogen, which uh, only works if you connect it up to the whole system. Can I make a comment? Yes. Uh, this is a really good exercise for connecting the bottom of your body and the top of your body. Because you only really feels good if you're energetically coherent throughout, right? If you're fragmented, it's going to feel totally confusing and complex. If you're coherent and connected, then it's going to flow smoothly and feel good. <laughs> That's just from my experience. Yeah, and do it slow. Do it slow like, like we did. So you're actually feeling each each stage, you know, you know, cranking it up there at the end to show you what it feels like whenever you get into the flow there. But do it slow so you get that feel. Valerie, you got something? I was just gonna thank Sharon for having you um, turn your back like that, like being in class and the teachers in front. That uh, I found that helpful. Good, good. Um, cool. Anybody else? Okay, great. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Love you. Thanks, Ray. Bye, -bye. Take care. Bye, Joyce. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank